Hey everybody, so uh, this is a repair video on uh, old Bendix uh, coaster brake hub that I worked on the other day. It's an old couple Schwinn's there, so um, anyway, there's several different models. This is the Bendix uh, 70, which is uh, the last U.S. made version of the Bendix coaster brake. Um, but anyway, got this little uh, document that's it's a Sutherland's document. I'll put a link in the description there of the video, but um, got this off the Sheldon Brown site and um, basically kind of shows all the different models and how they all go together and uh, kind of all the parts break down, cross compatibility, uh, the basically the uh, process I'm about to describe here as far as video footage of actually overhauling the hub. But um, anyway, uh, I've always kind of had a soft spot in my heart for these these old Bendix coaster brakes because my first ever bike had one, my old Webco, and it had a Bendix 70 coaster brake on the old Skyway Tough Wheels, and um, the thing was really worn out when I got it, and so I used to basically take that thing apart probably once or twice a week just because I thought I somehow didn't put it back together correctly, and... Um, Anyway, long story short, when I was probably 10 or 11 years old, I pretty much got these things down for taking them apart and putting them back together. So uh, anyway, uh, we'll just go go over the actual process here. Um, so, you know, basically what you'll want to do first is uh, your the tools that you need for these are, you know, most everything nowadays is a metric tools. These are all going to use the SAE tools as far as pretty much everything on them but you can get by with I don't know you know adjustable crescent wrench or whatever but what you want to do first is take the little uh, screw the little nut and bolt off the coaster brake arm there and then these nuts are actually 5 8 uh, we don't have any SAE tools really in the shop I work at pretty new shop still so we really don't have any of the old school tools there but just use an adjustable crescent wrench there to get the wheel out um, this is a, I don't think this wheel's ever been rebuilt. Basically the bikes that were, there was two of them, and they had just, that they'd been ridden a little bit, and then just kind of sat as a display. So they're low miles and pretty clean, but the grease in the hubs were, basically was non-functional. This is one of the actual old Bendix wrenches that I have at home here, but just in a pinch you can use a 19 millimeter uh, cone wrench for the inside the adjusting cone there and then either a 7 8 wrench or just your adjustable crescent wrench there for the 7 8 lock nut. Um, so basically you'll just back those off of each other and it's a good idea if you want to use some like penetrating oil or WD-40 or something to kind of spray that down with. It helps being able to unscrew all your bits and stuff there. Uh, so basically you want to take the, the lock nut and your adjusting cone off first. That's your first two pieces, and then your uh, driver there. You can take the sprocket off at this point. I just left it on, and we're going to take the driver out. You just basically thread it counterclockwise, and should come right out. You've got your small bearing retainer there, um, and then the large retainer. There's two of the large retainers, one of the small retainer bearings there. So flip the assembly over, then your axle brake expander piece with the other bearing will come right out. Um, this and the grease in this thing was so old it was like tar so really wasn't getting much function off of it and got the two the Bendix 70 uses two brake pads the 76 will use four smaller ones but you got your retarder assembly there with your expander the clutch and then the retarder spring all in one assembly so that's pretty much it we got an empty hub shell from here uh, so we're going to kind of disassemble some of the sub assemblies here. So you got basically got a lock nut, and then the actual brake arm acts basically is the uh, I guess the, what you would normally have as far as the cones. So you basically just tighten that lock nut right up against the brake arm when you're uh, cinching it back together, or you know to undo it, you just use the brake arm as like one wrench, and then your outer seven eighths wrench there, whatever on the lock nut. Um, so kind of got to work this sometimes that was a little sticky a lot of times these dust caps are difficult to get off 
Um, I ended up just sticking a little screwdriver in there and working it between the bearing and the dust cap just easily and it kind of worked it loose there and just popped it right off. And then you got your bearing which is going to slide over. You kind of want to be careful here. Try to keep it as straight as you can but it will slide off of there. You know, and then from here you can clean all those bits up. Uh, so this is a little more difficult to get the little retaining spring off that holds the sprocket on with it in one piece like this. Probably would have worked better if I used a slightly smaller screwdriver but you want to just get it there underneath in one of the little three divots and work it up under that little retainer clip spring thing there and um, once you get it up under there you'll pop it off just a little and then once you get it to that point you can just work it in in between there and it'll pop right off just don't get it spring it into your eyes or something so you get your dust cap and then the, the driver there so um, I basically washed it in our solvent tank or I actually let it soak overnight the first one that was really greasy and that worked really well we have a safety clean aqueous I guess is how you say that tank which uses really hot water and I don't know if it's baking soda or something like that, but there's several different um, suitable solvents that you can use. You can use acetone or WD-40 will help, you know, break it up. Um, mineral spirits, you know, just carburetor cleaner, whatever. The more heavy your stuff is going to be pretty toxic. You'd want to use gloves and things, but, you know, you can do a lot with uh, just some basic stuff. But anyway got everything cleaned up we're gonna start off kind of reverse we're gonna put this as the uh, assembly here the axle brake arm and expander assembly so put our bearing on uh, notice the flat side faces out this is the original Bendix bearing with text on it so you always want the text on everything to be facing outward so um, you know we got that on I kind of you know, I didn't lock this down super tight. You can do that at the very end when you're giving it the final adjustment to make sure your your axle sticking out evenly on both ends. You know, I think this one's probably an inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter or so, something like that. Um, now I'm going to put the little retarder assembly back together. Uh, so you got the one one side with the two little dogs on it that rests up against the brake pad, and then the other is your the clutch, the driver clutch or whatever that engages into the the hub shell itself. So put a little film of grease on the, you know, basically you want to put a film of grease on every all of this stuff, but that just pops into that little retarder spring and then the the little driver clutch there thing does the same thing. So you'll pop that back into the little spring there and that's set up. So we got our hub shell here. We've got a a small end that which is that end and then the bigger end so what you want to do first is just flip it up where the bigger end is open and you'll take your little retarder there you get the side with the little grooves on it that's the side you want to drop down with the two little dogs there the two little prongs sticking upwards and then you'll just uh, you know lube up your brake pads I've got the hub shell you can see inside of there it's pretty well lubed up put some nice amount of grease on the brake pads there and then you just drop it in there in between the hub shell and kind of wedge it between the the two little dogs there on either end so once you get those in there you're gonna have two little open spaces so then you'll just drop your uh, you have to kind of lift the hub up to get it in there but you just uh, center those two little dogs between the brake pads and it'll just kind of drop right in place you'll see the dust cover there pretty well flush right up almost against the hub so from there you'll flip it around and then you're going to put your other your large retainer spring i've already got it greased up just want to have grease in between there and then um put our little driver in there i've got the inside threads greased up I've should have didn't really show here but I put some grease on the threaded driver portion there we're greasing up the small bearing here uh, just kind of an FYI if any of the bearings are pitted out these retainers may be difficult to find but it's just a quarter inch ball bearing that you can pop those ones out of the retainers if need be and put new quarter inch bearings which are readily available um, 
you know, but the you get the cone here, but you know, again, that's kind of things you want to look for where wise or pits in the cones, um, you know, and then pitted out bearings. You know, like I say, this hub was pretty cherry, it was just really dirty. Uh, so put our dust cover back on and the uh, the sprocket and we'll put our ring back on. I didn't really show uh, locking the lock nut and the cone together. Basically what you want to, you'll you know adjust the cone down to where there's no play within the hub and then you just lock the uh, the lock nut up against the the uh, cone there kind of put them together and this is just reverse video of my uh, taking the wheel out so you know what you want to do is just kind of maybe snug it in place where it holds it then you can attach your brake arm and then from there alternate you know loosen and tighten until you get the wheel centered and the correct tension on the chain is the easiest way I found to do it you know once you get it set set in place and tension then you can put the final torque down on your axle that's there to hold it in place and you know just test it out pedal it you should have a good engagement when you pedal backwards and hit the brake and shouldn't get more than an eighth of a turn or so before it engages and starts to drive it there so anyway hopefully you found the video interesting or helpful if you're rebuilding one of those and uh, we'll see you guys next time thanks for watching